Yo, what's good YouTube? It's your boy Jared Bless coming to you guys with another video, man. I know I haven't made a video since UFC 278, but hey, look, UFC 280 is right around the corner. So we are back again in full effect. I got to get more, you know, consistent where I'm doing fight nights, things like that. And we will just stay tuned with it, man. But let's talk about UFC 280. I'm not going to talk about the full cards today, but I am going to talk about the main event. Obviously, Charles Oliveira versus Islam Makachev. And um, before we get into the video, guys, do me a favor. Drop a like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And when you guys comment, comment down below your thoughts on this fight. Specifically, I want to see thoughts on this fight and what kind of videos you guys want to see me do in the future. But with that being said, let's get straight into today's video. So, obviously, I know you guys seen the title, Why I Think Charles Oliveira is going to dominate this fight. And I'll get straight into it just by saying this. The people that Islam Makachev has fought recently is definitely not compared to what Charles Oliveira has had to fight. Now, if you look at, you know, we can go all the way back to when Islam first fought, not even when he first fought, but just in his second fight in the UFC. We can literally go back to that and look and see that he literally was KO'd in his second fight in the UFC. So the reason why I want to pinpoint that is because it shows that he can be finished. Now, typically when people think about fighters or fights, they think about, you know, has this fighter ever been finished before? And if not, they tend to go along that direction. Like, okay, well, if he's never been finished before, then the chances of it happening is slim to none. Even though sometimes it can go the other way, more than likely, more times than not, people are going to assume whichever way it folds on. Whether you've been finished, they're going to assume, okay, you can definitely be finished again. And if you haven't been finished, they're going to lean towards, you know, you're probably not going to get finished. So the fact that Islam has been knocked out before, it just makes... You know, it, it leans towards the favor, you know, in favor of Charles Oliveira a lot more. And that was only in Islam's second fight in the UFC. Obviously, he hasn't lost since then. But if you look at the level of competition that he fought, he hasn't really fought any good level of competition. I can go through the list and I can tell you guys who is competition. April 20, 20th of 2019, he fought Armin Sarukian. That was a great fight. Um, Even though he won a unanimous decision, if you guys watch the fight, awesome fight. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen... Armin Sarukian versus um, Matush Gamrat, but that was a great high-level fight. Uh, Sarukian is not like a low-level fighter. He's definitely a great grappler, um, great kickboxer, those are heavy kicks. So he's a good fighter. That was a great win for, um, you know, for Islam, but definitely not a top 10, top 5 lightweight opponent. Um, from there, he fought Drew Dober, who's a tough guy, but Drew Dober doesn't have any wrestling at all. So that's not a great win. I mean, the highest that Drew Dober has ever been ranked in lightweight, to my knowledge, is at least like bottom, like what? number 15 something along that rank so this is not a this is not even a top 10 lightweight after that he fought tiago moises who i don't even think has been ranked that lightweight yet but is a good fighter um has had some good wins um and there was a threat on the ground for you know tiago moises to lock in a hill hook of some sort he had islam in danger in a couple of those times but um in the end it's like tiago moises is just not a top 10 top five lightweight fighter after that, he fought Dan Hooker on short notice. I think Dan Hooker took that fight on six days notice. It was something crazy. And he finished Dan Hooker immediately with an arm bar. And we all know what Dan Hooker has looked like since he has fought uh, Dustin Poirier. You guys know how MMA is such an unforgiving sport, especially in the UFC. You're fighting the highest level of, of fighters. And at some point, these fighters end up falling off like Tony Ferguson. And I love Tony Ferguson. He's one of my favorite fighters. But you either end up falling off like Tony Ferguson or... Or you end up walking away like Habib or GSP. And um, even with Habib, he had one of the most successful careers because he walked away without taking any damage and he walked away on his own terms. GSP was finished in his career before, you know what I'm saying? And he, he was still around for it. But, you know, that I hope you guys pretty much get that. But um, that was the whole gist of what was going on with Dan Hooker. And then Islam Makachev fought Bobby Green again, another opponent on short notice. And we, Bobby Green is a veteran in the sport, great boxer. But we all know that Bobby Green does not have any type of wrestling um, to be on the ground to threaten Islam to do anything, especially on short notice. That that fight was not going to go well for Bobby Green. Maybe if he would have had a full training camp, something different could have happened. But we know that Bobby Green was not going to be able to do anything with Islam in that fight. And he was obviously finished. So going on from there, right, you think about it, okay, the level of competition that Islam has fought ha just hasn't been anywhere, he hasn't fought anybody, he hasn't fought a single top five, top ten lightweight. Dan Hooker, 
Um, I mean, you can kind of see he's top, but he was a shell of himself. Dan Hooker, let's put it like this. Dan Hooker is his only top 10 win in lightweight. Like, let's really be real here. Dan Hooker just got finished by a featherweight. He, he, like, you know what I'm saying? It just it just doesn't match up in terms of what's going to, you know, what he's going to get going up against with Charles Oliveira. Now, when we think about Charles Oliveira, this guy is dangerous on the feet, dangerous on the ground. And if we're thinking about both of their fight styles, Charles on the feet is clearly the better boxer, more weapons, just extremely dangerous and better knockout power. Not to say that Islam doesn't have some, some power because I think Islam does have about, um, I think he has a knockout or two. Um, the others are TKOs. But um, we know who has more knockouts and that's Charles Oliveira. And we know who has more submissions and that's Charles Oliveira with 21 submissions. Um, I just, you know, we and we can go through the list of who Charles Oliveira has fought. Not even to just mention... Uh, you know, we're just going to go through the list of who he's fought since he's been in the UFC, right? Uh, we'll, we'll look at former champions, things like that. Um, so he's been in the UFC all the way since 2010, August of 2010. Um, we're not going to go through any of the guys that are like, you know, we'll just go through some legends. Jim Miller, Donald Cerrone. He lost Donald Cerrone. He fought Frankie Edgar. He lost. He fought Max Holloway. He lost. Former champion. Uh, he fought Anthony Pettis. He lost. Former champion. Um, he fought Paul Felder and he lost. And Paul Felder was his last loss in 2017. From there, he beat Clay Guida. Um, he beat Jim Miller, Kevin Lee, uh, Tony Ferguson, Michael Chandler, Dustin Poirier, Justin Gaethje. So, uh, you know, when he fought Kevin Lee, Kevin Lee was top 10 in the lightweight division. Um, he was number eight. Um, I think Charles Oliveira around that time was um, number 13. This was, this was around the time of the pandemic. You guys know that uh, Brazil card. Uh, that was, you know, obviously in Brazil around March 2020. That was the first fight that, you know, was with no fans. And um, at the time, Oliveira was ranked number 13. And uh, Kevin Lee was ranked number 8. So he got the win over Kevin Lee. He got the finish. Then he ended up fighting Tony Ferguson, who was ranked number 3. At that point, Charles Oliveira was number 8 or so. And Tony Ferguson was number 3. Um, obviously, Charles Oliveira had a Tony Ferguson in a serious armbar that... 99% of other fighters would have probably tapped to, and he dominated that fight from start to finish. Um, you know what I'm saying? So that was another, obviously, Tony's a legend. Uh, he beat him, who was uh, top three, uh, lightweight. Then he came through and beat Michael Chandler. He finished him, um, who was also another top-ranked lightweight. Now, I don't, even though Michael Chandler's a top-ranked lightweight, I'm not biased. I know for a fact that Michael Chandler has two wins, um, by the time he fought Tony Ferguson, Tony Ferguson was an absolute shell of himself. Um, he did look good in the fight. I'll be fair. Tony Ferguson did look good in round number one, but round number two, he just got that front kick. So, you know, I'll give Chandler a little bit of a credit for that, but I mean, he also knocked out Dan Hooker, who was, like I said, he just hasn't been the same since the fight with Poirier. Like he left a, a part of himself in the octagon that night. So, um, the next win was obviously against my favorite fighter, Dustin Poirier. He got the uh, rear naked choke. And we, we, we all know that outside of Habib, Dustin Poirier has been the best lightweight. Obviously, Charles Oliveira came around, so I'll say the third best lightweight. But Dustin Poirier doesn't lose to anybody but the best. He's only lost to Habib, and he's only lost to Charles Oliveira in the past how many years? So that says it in itself. And he's the number one contender for the belt, realistically speaking. Um, If you know Charles Oliveira would have still had the belt, we know he's a champion, but if he would have still had the belt officially, he'd be the champion, and Dustin Poirier would be ranked number one. So we all know this. And obviously, he got the win over Justin Gaethje, who earned his title shot. And Justin Gaethje's been a top five lightweight for year for years now. Ever since Justin Gaethje has got into the UFC, he's been top five. I think when he fought Michael Chandler, or not Michael Chandler, when he fought Michael Johnson um, at that UFC fight night in 2017, Michael Johnson was ranked number five at that time. So Justin Gaethje has been ranked five for the longest. So you guys get what I'm trying to say here. The level of competition that these two fighters have faced in Charles Oliveira and Islam Makachev is just vastly different. You know, and Charles Oliveira has paid his dues. Um, he's fought the tough competition. He's learned. He's been through the fires. Um, and I feel like going into this fight in Abu Dhabi for UFC 280, it's not looking good for Islam. I know some people are probably going to be like, bro, what the hell are you talking about? It's not looking good for Islam. Charles Oliveira is, is way too dangerous on the ground. He's the best submission artist in UFC history. And he's way too dangerous on the feet. He has serious knockout power, knees, elbows, front kicks, Everything you can think of, he has an arsenal, and he fights at such a crazy pace that if Islam doesn't try to shoot right away and try to see the, the, the best thing for Islam in this fight, guys, 
is for him to just hold on to Charles Oliveira. That is the best thing for Islam, is for him to literally hold on to Charles Oliveira and hope for the best. So in terms of what their fight's gonna look like, either Islam is gonna hold on to Charles for the entire fight and try to just literally like bear hug him and like lay on top of him, pray, get some ground strikes off, or Charles is gonna get a finish. I, the only way I see Charles winning is by finish. I see him, I legitimately see, see him getting a literal finish and um, it's not impossible because, you know, Islam has been knocked out before. So I think I pretty much touch, ba touch base on why I know that Charles Oliveira will dominate this fight. Obviously, it's fighting. Islam can run out there and throw one punch and knock Charles Oliveira out. I mean, fighting is crazy. We've seen every crazy thing happen at this point. If you're a true fan and not a casual, so it shouldn't really shock anybody. But hey, man, y'all do me a favor. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. Let's aim for 10 likes, man. If you guys want to see more videos like this. Um, also, I will do a video for you guys on UFC 280 picks. So if you guys want to see the betting picks that I'm going to do for UFC 280, let me know. Yeah, that's going to do it, man. Uh, Charles Oliveira will dominate this fight. And if you guys feel any different, let me know, man. But for now, that's pretty much it. It's your boy, Jared Bless. Make sure you guys leave a like, comment, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you guys never miss another upload. And be sure to follow me on Twitter, man. The link is down below in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next video, man. Peace.